Hi there, it's Wednesday Insights, the deep dive into meteorology here at One Degree Outside today. And yeah, those of you who watch regularly know, hey, wait a minute, there's something different here. Vacation mode. Yeah, we've taken the kids on vacation this week. And some of you have actually commented on these videos and said, wait, did you bring a green screen on vacation? It's what we do. It's our job. The answer to that is yes. But thank you for making One Degree Outside part of your daily routine. So it only made sense to do that because if you keep coming back, it makes sense for us to keep putting out some content. So, look, we've got thunderstorms and rain that's on the way for later Thursday, Thursday night, Friday. I think the heaviest rain rates are going to be on Thursday night into Friday morning at the far south coast. You actually may get some of that lingering into Friday. We'll take a look at that together. The weekend looks great for everybody. That's good news. And actually, a lot of next week looks really good, too. Have you heard about the big earthquake that happened over at the coastline of Russia? So here we are in the United States. We can shift the view back out to the west. It was a magnitude 8.8. Folks, that is a really big deal. If you haven't heard about it already or if you just want kind of the nuts and bolts of it, bottom line, sixth strongest earthquake in recorded history. There were tsunamis reported across the Pacific, and that included places like right at the peninsula in Russia where this happened with a 13-foot tsunami or at the coast of California generally two to three feet some reports maybe closer to four or five but no big damage out of that in cali just huge tidal fluctuations going on there are still tsunami advisories in place for aftershocks because when you get a magnitude 8.8 .8, the aftershocks have even been over seven in some instances and that in and of itself would be enough to be concerning for tsunami uh, you know generation so we'll be watching that very carefully along the west coast here over the course of the next couple of days at least so it's predicted smoke in the atmosphere this is surface-based smoke we've had some of it around today going into the day tomorrow there will still be some but there's a lot of clouds that come into play in some spots tomorrow and then eventually by friday we sweep away a lot of that surface smoke at the surface in terms of weather kind of you know impacts look You've got a cold front that's coming in on top of us, but it slows substantially. As we go from today to tomorrow and even into Friday, it takes its sweet time to go down to the south and east. And that's why we get a focus of heavy rain and downpours that comes in particularly to southern New England as this thing comes through. And then you open the door to the nicer air on Saturday, which might come with its own wildfire smoke again. But you can see Saturday's high temperatures, huge part of the northeastern United States going to be running in the 70s. Really comfortable air that's on the way as we get into Saturday. Look, I'll dive into some of the overview on the timing. Just a reminder, you can always use our app, five stars and totally free. Search the number one degree outside weather on the App Store and Google Play. The temperature is just off the deck, about 6,000 feet up really do tell the story. We've got this cool bundle of air that's over Canada that wants to come south. The heat and humidity does not want to give way. So you get this long, drawn-out battle that takes place over New England, the height of that battle being Thursday night, and essentially the colder air ends up winning by the time we get later on Friday. And again, that's why you get that really pleasant air into the weekend. What does it mean in terms of timing, in terms of any types of showers and storms? Look, today, there'll be some isolated storms that may be severe, and we covered that already in our earlier 24-hour video, right? Uh, you, of course, you can stay tuned to our app for all the updates on that. Just make sure you have notification and location turned on. Then on Thursday morning, tomorrow morning, I think we've got maybe an isolated shower or downpour out of the gate. But notice as we get through the midday, we start to fire up more of that near the south coast or far southern New England, more coming out of New York State, so that by the time we get to the late day, now you've filled a lot of this in basically from the lakes region of New Hampshire and southern Maine Point southward. Heaviest rain across southern New England and heaviest, as I mentioned, coming in overnight Thursday night we do get some of that rain to continue all the way up to the lakes region but by friday during the morning to midday we're likely to take that and shift it down to the southeast so by the end of the day almost everybody's done last to end would be the cape and the islands there is a flash flood threat in here because of the fact that some of the downpours will recur in the same place again and again and that collision of warmth and humidity with the cooler air coming in there's that great air that's in on saturday and frankly it's a big dome of high pressure so aside from maybe some sunday showers across northern maine I think a lot of us are in good shape for days on end. In terms of excessive rain, the, the threat for flash flooding, here's the way the Weather Prediction Center down in uh, Maryland sees it. Generally, you've got what's going to be at least isolated to perhaps scattered flash flooding that's expected tomorrow across the entirety of the southern half of New England. Again, the worst of that being in the evening into tomorrow night. Then by Friday, mostly it's the south coast of Connecticut or the extreme south coast. A lot of the uh, threat shifting farther down to the south as that cold front finally nudges down to the south and east. So how much rain do we get? 
I had shown you a map a couple of days ago, and Danielle updated it yesterday, that had inches upon inches of rain, like five inches in spots. Honestly, that still is quite within the realm of possibility, particularly perhaps in parts of southwestern Mass or western Connecticut. So the general amounts will be probably on the order of an inch and a half to two and a half inches, and then less the farther north you go. But localized in there? somebody probably is going to end up with a three or four or greater inch amount where the downpours kind of follow each other again and again. And the greatest chances in those spots that I just mentioned. This does on Thursday keep the high temperatures down a little bit. Certainly the worst of the heat breaks after today. We're talking about temperatures near 80. Say, I don't see a lot on there in terms of showers and storms. No, but remember I showed you it's kind of it starts out isolated and ramps up the deeper into the day that you get. So that Thursday night, we're all dealing with it. Cooler air is coming into play. And actually on Friday, it's going to be a cool day in a number of spots. I mean, we may be talking about 60s for some of us here because the wind's coming out of the northeast. The farther north you go, into the 70s we are because you're drying out during the course of the day on Friday and getting some sun to break out. There's that beautiful day on Saturday. We think Sunday overall looks really good for us as well. The temperatures start to rebound a bit by coming back into the 80s. So at least we know we've got a good weekend to look forward to. Just a reminder, if you want some of the One Degree Outside gear, you can always do that, swag.onedegreeoutside.com. Look, we do want to stay on top of what may be this kind of flash flood situation for some of us later Thursday, Thursday night. So we'll provide you updates as new information continues to come in. But for now, that's your deep dive into meteorology over the next several days. Look forward to seeing you again in just a little while at OneDegreeOutside.com and atop the home screen of our One Degree Outside weather app.